Welcome to our Ardenwood Presents webinar on Medicare for Christian Scientists. You know, the last time we met on this subject was way back in March. I'm John Mitchell, and I serve as Executive Director and CEO for Ardenwood here in San Francisco. These webinars are designed to inspire and inform you about important topics for all of us to be aware of. Today, our presenters, Jim, Katie, and Nancy, will update us on upcoming changes to Medicare, how they could affect you, and how to navigate the enrollment periods. There will be time to answer some questions, but most questions will be answered in a second webinar this Thursday at 4 p.m. Please be sure to register if you haven't already. Ardenwood supports the Ministry of Christian Science Nursing, both here in our facility and in the field through our, vis Christian, our visiting Christian Science Nurse Service and online events like this one. We also mentor Christian Science nurses throughout their education. As a 501c3 charitable nonprofit organization, Ardenwood depends on financial support to help us provide the highest quality of uninterrupted care. Thank you all for your thoughtful and generous contributions. They make a real difference, truly. Now let's talk about today's webinar on Medicare. Why is this information important for a Christian scientist to know? Well, because it's a big help when it comes to paying for skilled care. Skilled care is the kind of care someone would receive ordinarily in a hospital as a non-Christian scientist, and it's expensive. We have all paid into Medicare throughout our working lives, paycheck by paycheck. Hopefully one will never need skilled care. But in the event that you do, Medicare is one option for those who are 65 or over. And let me make a very important point here. There is no difference in the care you receive at Ardenwood if you are a medic on Medicare or not. It's exactly the same care. Medicare simply helps you pay your bill. I also want to emphasize the true wisdom of giving thought to a personal care plan now so that you or a loved one are prepared if there ever is a need for Christian Science Nursing Care. In that situation, you want, and we want, your focus to be on God, on healing, and not on your bill. Thinking through your options in advance relieves anxiety and eliminates fear all around, yours and your loved ones. It's, simple, it's that simple. One other point that's important to know, Medicare coverage is essential if you, find, if you ever find yourself in a care setting that's not your first choice. Ardenwood is designated in federal law as a religious non-medical healthcare institution, what we call a rinky for short. And as a rinky, a religious non-medical healthcare institution, Ardenwood is a Medicare Part A provider. One perception of Medicare is that it requires you to share too much information about your physical well-being. As the payor, Medicare wants to ensure that the care received should be covered. We have found that Medicare is much less intrusive than most insurance companies are. Here's what Medicare expects from a rinky like Arden Wood. And I'm reading from the law right now. A rinky furnishes non-medical items such as services and in to inpatients on a 24 hour basis, check. A rinky does not furnish on the basis of religious beliefs, read Christian science, through its personal personnel or otherwise medical items and services, including any medical screening, examination, diagnosis, prognosis, treatment, or the administration of drugs for its patients. That's pretty clear language. So we report only general information to Medicare because as you know, Christian science nurses do not diagnose or conduct any screening, examining, or administering of drugs, which is consistent with Christian science and the law. So two final points before we begin. First, the content shared today is only informational and is not intended as legal advice. And second, a replay of this webinar will be available on our website, ardenwood.org, in the next day or so. Replays of all of our webinars are also available on our website. 
As a reminder, you can ask questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Now, let me introduce our presenters today. Jim Maher is a certified senior advisor and a broker consultant specializing in Medicare. He is also a certified long-term care insurance strategist. Jim has talked to thousands, literally, of Christian scientists since we started these webinars now four years ago. He is happy to answer questions about Medicare, long-term care insurance, and estate planning. He's been a tremendous blessing to our field. And from what he's told me, he enjoys meeting and working with all of you. Katie Burris is a Medicare specialist and certified long-term care consultant, helping individuals with their Medicare and long-term care planning strategies. Katie is a partner at McGrew and Maher Insurance Services and has been in the business for nearly two decades. She's a license, she is licensed in several states for life insurance, long-term care, and Medicare. Nancy Sedan is our finance director here at Arden Wood, and she has many years of experience with Medicare and other health care insurance policies throughout her work here. So let's get started. Jim, Katie, and Nancy, it's all yours. Hey, great. Thank you, John, for the nice uh, warm welcome. That's nice seeing everybody again. Uh, like John says, we love helping Christian scientists uh, fourth or fifth year. And we've talked to, I mean, literally thousands of you out there. So we're really looking forward to talking about 2024 and how we can help Christian scientists. So first, I'm going to tell you a little. I know John just told you, but um, a little about ourselves here. We've been doing this. Katie's controlling the slides here. There we go. <laughs> Um, I've been doing this since 1989, so this is my 34th year of helping individuals, families, companies with Medicare. This is our family-run agency here. That's my two sons, Katie. Katie's father was my business partner, Suzanne. So we always say, hey, we're a family, we care, which we truly do. We truly do believe that. So, uh, But we've been doing this a long time and really like helping people. Uh, we're now licensed in most all of the states, a few exceptions, but the majority of the states across the United States. And we've talked to Christian scientists literally from Maine to Florida, Southern California, to Washington, to Alaska, Hawaii, um, <laughs> all over. So it's an uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Can't forget Cedar Rapids. So it's an absolute pleasure talking to you. And today we just want to make you aware of some things that are going on right now. Katie's going to tell you a little about herself, though, first. I'm a Medicare specialist, and I'm also a certified long-term care consultant. And really, our job is we're broker consultants, and we're here to specialize in Medicare and long-term care. Uh, we're not affiliated with Medicare, Social Security, or any other government agency. We are completely independent, and we really help mitigate health care costs in retirement. That's what our job is to do. So... What is on the docket for today? Today's agenda, we're going to talk about what's going on now. We're going to talk about Medicare basics, what Medicare covers, supplemental coverage, and lastly, long-term care. So the government has names, different names for what's going on now. Medicare may call it the open enrollment period, the annual election period, the annual enrollment period. They all mean the same thing. And starting from October 15th, and it runs through December 7th. So this is a time for people that have Medicare plans to make changes. It's not the time to sign up, really. It's time if you have a, a Medicare Advantage or a Part D plan, or you want to look at making changes in January, now's the time to talk about doing it. One thing for Christian scientists we see out there, this is a great opportunity to cancel Medicare Advantage plans. We're going to talk about that because it's super important that Christian and scientists understand that that's probably not the best policy to have if your goal is to receive spiritual care, for example, at Arden Wood. Those really don't work well. And now's the time that you can actually change that. And then the 2024 numbers were just announced by Medicare, and we're going to go over those and the changes to the Part A deductible and then the Part B break. Part B premiums and deductible as well. And that has a major impact on your cost and your stay, whether it's at a regular at a hospital or a Christian science uh, ranking, for example. So Medicare basics, we're going to talk about the parts of Medicare and we talk about original Medicare. So original Medicare is what you get through the government and it has two parts to it. 
Part A is the hospital insurance, and that's what works at a rinky or a religious non-medical healthcare institution. We just refer to it as a rinky for short. And then part B being the medical insurance side. So when you can sign up for Medicare, there are three different times. The first one is the initial enrollment period, or they call it an IEP. And that would be when you turn 65. So if you turn 65, let's say in April, you can sign up anywhere from January 1st to July 31st. So three months before the month of and three months after your 65th birthday. And that's super important. The government's saying, listen, we're giving you this seven month window, so don't blow it. But they don't send you out anything saying, hey, listen, you should enroll for Medicare there under the assumption that you know what you're doing, that you're supposed to understand these enrollment periods. It's kind of like taxes, right? The government says you need to understand what you can deduct, what you can do tax wise. Well, guess what? With Medicare, it's the same thing. The government assumes you know what you're doing. Um, thank God that we we're able to help people because most people don't. So the example, Katie, we normally give is I usually pick April. If your birthday was April 16th, let's use next year of 1959. That means you're going to turn 65 next April, whether you like it or not. So you have this seven month window starting in January that you can enroll for Medicare, your birthday month or three months after. So even though your birthday is April 16th, they push you forward. So your effective day would be April 1st for both Part A and B of Medicare. It's really important that if you're not on a large group plan, a company plan, that you do enroll during this time frame, or you can face fines, and the fines last forever. Right? They're unforgiving. The second time that you can enroll, it's called a special enrollment period. So if you're working past 65 and you're working for a group that has more than 20 employees, and that is the caveat, that is absolutely the key. So with that scenario, you do not have to enroll in Medicare when you turn 65. Regardless of what your brother-in-law, your neighbor, your coworker, right. hey, anybody tells you, because they will tell you this over and over again, if you are on a group plan with 20 or more employees, you do not have to sign up when you turn 65. That's where the special enrollment period comes in. And the way this special enrollment period works is when you lose that group coverage, you have eight months to enroll in Medicare Part A and Part B. But nobody ever, ever waits eight months. So if I'm 67 and I'm a Christian scientist, I'm working for a company that has more than 20 employees, I usually want to plan three or four months in advance at least. That way I know I can enroll in parts A and B, right, which we want to do. And then there's no penalty or anything like that. So always give yourselves at least three or four months in advance when you're coming off a group plan. And by the way, because I've been asked this, why does 20 or more matter? Well, if you have 20 or more employees in your company, the group health plan is the primary uh, payer on a claim. So that means they're responsible to pay the claim. So therefore, you do not need to enroll for parts A and or B of Medicare. You do not. That's probably one of the number one questions we get asked. Katie says, it's usually the brother-in-law. He told me that I need to enroll. That is not true. But if the company, it's a small company, if I'm self-employed, if I'm a realtor, uh, an attorney, and, and practice for myself, and I have less than 20 employees, then you must enroll for Medicare when you turn 65 because Medicare becomes primary. And that's super important because if you have a major claim and you didn't sign up, they're going to look, the insurance company is, where is your Medicare? And if you don't sign up for Medicare, they do not have to pay that claim, right? So think of that. So it's super important that you understand the difference between of more than 20 employees and less than 20 employees. The other thing is with this special enrollment period, you have eight months to pick up Medicare Part A and Part B, but Part C and Part D, you only have 63 days. Right. So that's one more reason that people normally don't wait. Plus, you want to make sure that you have the Medicare coverage in place so you're not without coverage of any type. Exactly. And the last enrollment period is a general enrollment period. And um, we've seen this apply to several Christian scientists when they don't enroll at Medicare at 65 because they were never told or informed. They didn't watch one of our presentations. And so um, you just can't arbitrarily say, gee, I think I'm going to sign up for Medicare in July or August. That's not how it works. 
The government says the general enrollment period is every January through March of every year. And so if I'm 67, 68, 69, 74, and I did not enroll for Part B or to add Part B, that is the time to do it. And we're going to talk about the penalties, but at least you can get that coverage. Like John was saying, it's so important to have that buffer. If I'm a Christian scientist, I want to make sure I have both A and Part B just in case, right? We, we're not talking about the other insurance. We're just talking about Medicare. And um, they changed it last year where if you apply in January, your coverage is effective February 1st. If you apply in February, it'll be March 1st. And in March, it will be April 1st because that's not how it used to be. And if you apply during this general enrollment period, that's where Jim talked about that penalty that applies. So that's where the Part B penalty would apply. And we're going to talk about what those numbers look like. Right. And that's the time, too, that you can add supplemental coverage if you so desire. Right. That's the Once you have A and B enforced, then you can look at adding supplemental. So the next thing is, how much does Medicare cost? It's not free. Right. They tell you government says some parts are free, but there's nothing free about it. Oh, we're going to talk about cover and then yeah. cost. <laughs> I got excited about the cost. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so let's talk about Part A of Medicare. That's important for Christian scientists. Um, I always tell people, you know, there's two parts, A and B. A, think of it as the accommodation side to Medicare. You're going to normally spend the night somewhere in a, in a rinky, in a hospital, if you're receiving skilled care, whether it's in a rinky, right, or in a, in a hospital, um, hospices, end of life care, that's also covered by Part A. So it's important that you understand Part A is normally premium free. It drives me crazy when they tell you it's it's free. There's nothing free about it. Every time you get a paycheck during your working career, if you look at the bottom, it used to be a pay stub. I don't know what they call it now, some <laughs> kind of electronic form. But 1.45% of your paycheck, every time you get one, goes into the Medicare Part A trust. The employer also matches that number. So 2.9% is really going into this Medicare trust. So it's not it's not free. You're simply not paying any more premiums on it. You've pre-funded it. You've pre-funded it, Katie. That's exactly right. So Medicare Part A coverage is nationwide. It includes any hospital or rinky in the U.S. Right. So with the Part A hospital insurance, we're going to talk about a benefit period. So Medicare folks works a little bit different than regular insurance. So regular insurance normally has maybe a deductible, copay, stuff like that. And then you have you meet that once a year, normally once a calendar year. When we're talking about Part A expenses, anytime you go in a hospital or a rinky, they look at this benefit period. And that means that you've gone into a facility and you're an inpatient and it ends when you haven't received care for 60 days. So if you go into a rinky in January and then you go back in in July, you're going to have two different benefit periods. That's right. Very confusing, but that's that's the way it is. So um, they have deductibles and co-pays. So, for example, if you're in the first 60 days, the deductible last year was $1,600. This year went up by 2%. So for the first 60 days, I would pay $1,632. You go, what about, what if I'm in longer for some type of spiritual healing? If it's it's longer than that, day 61 to 90 now goes to a per day copay of $408. So again, they just added 2% on to all the uh, copays last year. Finally, they have what's called reserve days. And these are days 91 to 150. And that's a higher copay. And you're going to see that's at... $816 per day. Again, these are reserved days. Um, some care doesn't last that long and some does. We just want to make sure that you understand what the total cost could be, hoping it never reaches that, but it could be. And Nancy, do you have anything to add on this portion? Well, you're explaining it very well. Um, and I guess I just would like to reiterate that um, part A uh, is what is uh, what you need in order to have coverage at Arden Wood or any Rinky, um, so long as your care need qualifies for Medicare. Um, and as as they've just said, the first 60 days, all you would pay is 1,632. Medicare pays everything else um, in terms of your care. Um, and 
a lot of our patients go home way before 60 days. Um, but these are costs that you need to be aware of uh, in your financial planning. Um, and, um, and Katie and Jim will show you more ideas on how you can cover these um, in uh, through a supplemental plan uh, or in other ways. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> so part A, when we talk about what the potential costs are, if you're in for an extended period of time, um, you're right. On the first 60 days, it's the 1632. If you're in and your stay is now 90 days total, you would be looking at the 408 per day from day 61 through 90. And that would be an additional $12,240. If your stay still is a Medicare approved stay at a rinky and you're looking at days 91 through 150, that would be an additional 48,960. So if you're in for the 150 days, which some people are, some people aren't, you're looking at a total cost of over $62,000. So that's where people get into trouble or they get concerned that that number, that's a big number. But we're going to show you a way through a Medicare supplement, right, Nancy, where you can say, hey, I'm going to pay zero in a hospital or in a rinky for a for a stay. We're going to show you that. We just always want to show people what happens if you don't have some type of supplemental coverage, right? What your exposure could be. Hopefully it never will be, but it could be. Nancy, one of the questions we get most often, and I'm sure we'll have again Thursday, is how do we know if Medicare approves a stay? How how will we know if this applies for in a rinky? Yeah, that is a great question. Um, and of course, it depends on what the care need is. Um, and it would need to be a care need that um, would we were we not in a rinky, uh, you would be needing to go to the hospital or have skilled nursing care provided, um, skilled care, which uh, in the medical uh, world means um, rehabilitation, that type of, of uh, for a, a particular need. So, that's something that is determined by um, our experienced Christian science nurses, and they determine along with the um, uh, committee, um, according to the rules of, of Medicare, um, they all uh, weigh in on whether or not that care need is qualified or not. Awesome. Thank you, Nancy. Good deal. Now <laughs> that helps out. <laughs> that does. That, it really does, Nancy. That's always good to clarify that. So next, uh, we're going to talk about the Part B side. Part B is the medical side. It's what most Christian scientists don't use, and most non-Christian scientists use a lot of. That's when you see the doctor, outpatient surgery, urgent care, things like that. Everything that's not under Part A is normally under Part B of Medicare. And Part B is not free. This year, it was $164.90. And guess what? They gave you a little bump, a little raise if you're receiving Social Security benefits. And they said, hey, we're also going to increase your monthly Medicare premium for 2024. That premium is now $174.70 per month. And that's per individual. So a husband and wife, you would multiply that by two. But the government loves higher earners. So if you're a higher earner, um, the government's going to charge you more than the $174.70. You see the acronym, we call it an IRMA. It's an income-related monthly adjustment amount. Essentially, Medicare is looking at your, you know, your tax return. return, and they're going to adjust it accordingly. So for 2024, they're going to look at your 2022 return. They do a two-year look back every year. And in 2025, they're going to look at your 2023 tax return. And we're going to give you, we have the specifics too. If somebody on there says, hey, I need to know all the brackets, we're happy to email that out to you too. But we just wanted to let you know, most people, 92% of people on Medicare are going to pay that $174.70. The other 8% are going to pay a higher monthly premium. Coverage for Part B is also nationwide and includes any provider that takes Medicare. The late enrollment penalty. So when we talked about that general enrollment period and we said that you have that penalty for every 12 months that you should have had Part B and didn't, you would pay a 10% penalty of your Part B premiums. So if you retired before 65 and then you turn 65 and you forgot to sign up during that initial enrollment period, 
And then let's say you wait two or three years and then you sign up during the general enrollment period, that January 1st to March 31st period, then that's where you would look at that 10% penalty. So if it's been two years or more than 24 months, you'd have a 20% penalty and that is added on for your Part B premium for the rest of your life. So it's not a one-time or a one once a year penalty. It's every month that penalty is charged. So when we talk about Part B expenses, Jim is right in that Christian scientists, for the most part, do not use Part B, except for in some very like small instances. We see occasionally um, if you need like an X-ray um, or you need a bone set, or in some cases in the Christian scientists that I have talked to that have needed care, it's they pass out or something happens when they're in public and someone means well, they call 911, and then they're transported by normally ambulance to an emergency room. And it's not a, it just happens because people mean well. They panic, they don't know what to do, and so they call 911. And if you're not cognizant to say, no, I don't want to go in, they will make that choice for you. Right. Yep. So that is covered under Part B. And if you don't have Part B, that's an issue because I don't care if you're in a couple hours in an emergency room. Normally, you're in there about eight hours is a general rule of thumb, at least. And then you decide whether they're going to admit you or not if you're in a hospital. But um, you're on the hook for 20 percent. If you have Medicare Part B, you're going to pay 20 percent. If you don't have Medicare Part B, you're, you're going to pay whatever they charge you. So that's why John in the beginning was talking about so important that Christian scientists understand that, you know, nor normally they can have A, right? Because if you're going to draw Social Security after age 65, they require you to have at least Part A of Medicare, not Part B. But not having Part B can really, Part B is a great buffer. It's better than nothing. And at least you know that the government's going to kick in and pay 80%. You'd be responsible for 20%. But in a few minutes here, we're going to show you what a supplemental plan would do and how that would protect your finances also. So when we talk about Medicare Part B, there is a deductible. For this year, it's $226. And as of January 1st, that's resetting to $240 for next year. Oh, why not? It did. <laughs> Nothing's going down right now. <laughs> okay. After you meet that deductible, if you just have Medicare Part A and Part B, you would be responsible for 20% of the cost, like Jim said. But the issue with that is there's not a cap. You don't right. get to a point where Medicare says, hey, Jim, you paid $3,000. That's it. You're done. You're good for the year. That 20% just keeps going. And if you have a year where you have a lot of expenses, that can get really high. Right. So if I had an incident in January and then one again in May and I'm on the hook for 20%, that, it's a scary number. It's easy to throw around these numbers and say, well, it's $12,000 or $14,000. But when you actually have to write a check for that, that's a big number. That's that's a big hit to your finances. Uh, but again, most people on a health plan now, you have an out-of-pocket maximum. If you're on a group plan or an individual plan, it's probably anywhere from three to $5,000 per person. So you know there's going to be a cap. But Medicare says, listen, we're going to pay 80, you pay 20%. But there is no cap. That's scary. To me, that's scary. So when we're talking about original Medicare, it, Part A and Part B, they don't cover everything. So we talked about the out-of-pocket costs that you have, not having the cap on the Part B. Um, it doesn't cover prescription drugs. And it doesn't cover routine dental vision or hearing care. So if you need eyeglasses, contacts, hearing aids, uh, you need to go see a dentist, that would not be covered. And in addition, long-term care is not covered. So we will tell you that over and over and over again, because we want to avoid you not understanding that Medicare isn't covered, and also so that you can tell your adult children so that they know as well, because unfortunately, we still get calls uh, almost every week. That's right. Adult children call us and they say, how are we supposed to pay for, you know, mom or dad's care? And I go, well, someone's going to have to write a check if you don't have any type of long-term care coverage or protection. And they want to know, well, what isn't that, that Medicare, Medicaid, Medi-Cal in California thing? Isn't that going to pay for it? And it's, again... It's skilled care, right? So if I, if I break a hip, well, we see that not with Christian scientists, but maybe with a lot of non-Christian scientists, they break a hip, they're in the hospital, then they go and receive skilled care, right? To get to do some type of occupational and physical therapy, get their gait back. 
That's skilled care. Medicare will cover that, but it's for a very limited time. It's what if I need to be in there longer than that, and it's not skilled care. That's long-term care or custodial care. And like Katie said, we want to make sure you understand that is not covered by Medicare. Super important. And lastly, Medicare does not cover care outside of the U.S. So anytime you're traveling outside of the U.S., Canada, Mexico, also outside of the U.S., anytime you're traveling outside of the U.S., just know that the Medicare doesn't cover you. There are policies that you can buy that would cover you in case a medical emergency happens, right. but Medicare will not cover you outside the U.S. So now we're going to talk about supplemental coverage, right? Super important. And I think once you see the costs, I think they make sense to most people, whether you want to do it or not. But we always want to show you, you do have the option. Once you have parts A and B of Medicare, right? This is what the Medicare card looks like. You know, we should just stop here for a minute. They changed these cards about four or five years ago. These are the new cards. We deal with a lot of people as they age in their 80s and 90s, and they don't like to throw anything away. They keep everything they have in their wallet or their purse. And sometimes they have the old Medicare cards. If your loved one, if your mom or dad or your aunt or uncle or your next door neighbor that you're helping, they have the old card with their, it's got their social security number on it, right? And a letter after it to disguise it. But you want to destroy that card. They do have all, everybody was sent out these new cards and it has an 11 digit encrypted number on there. Super important. And if they didn't get one or they still have it over in their wallet, it's super simple. Call 1-800-MEDICARE. They will send you a new card. And we see that all the time. People come in the office here and there. They just, they do not want to get rid of that old card. And that's not going to help them. That's going to hurt them when they try to receive care. So once you get parts A and B, which we've talked about, now you decide if you want additional coverage. So the first option would be getting a Medicare supplement plan and then a prescription drug plan, which is optional. And most Christian scientists don't do that. That's right. So a Medicare supplement plan is also called a Medigap plan. The thing you will find with Medicare is not only is it confusing, but a lot of times you will see like with Medicare supplement plans, they also go by two or three different names. So Medicare supplement, Medigap mean the exact same thing. It's just confusing. I mean, you can't, you can't just call <laughs> so one name, but they, but they can't do that. So Medicare supplement, Medigap, interchangeable terms means the same thing. Again, you've got to have parts A and B of Medicare, and you're going to find that, Katie, you can go on. I apologize. It helps pay for some of the costs that are not covered by Medicare. So a question that we get frequently is, can I just have Medicare Part A to get that supplement? No. And the answer is you have to have Part A and Part B. You can't just have one or the other. Right. What the supplement does is it comes in and it helps pay those claims that original Medicare Part A and Part B don't cover. So they're not there to make any medical determination. They're there simply to help you pay claims. And so you don't have to face large bills. And there's some really good plans out there with some really great companies that have been doing it a long time. And then there's some ones out there that are pretty brand new. And they have a tendency to offer the lowest cost plans, right? Kind of as a teaser rate to get you hooked onto their plans. So you have to be really careful. And at the end, I'm going to tell you, I've been doing this a long time. When I turned Medicare eligible last October, <laughs> I'll tell you the plan I have. But you want to make sure you've got a strong company that off, that's got a track record. And you want to look at, you know, rate increases, things like that. That's what you want to talk to us about. But it's, it's great because it helps offset your costs, right? Whether you're in a, in a rinky or a hospital, um, Original Medicare is awesome because it's nationwide coverage. I don't have to worry about, is this an HMO? Is this a PPO, a POS, uh, HSA, MSA, any, any of that stuff? You simply pick up the phone. And if I'm traveling, I need urgent care covered by Medicare. Anywhere in the United States, it opens up the entire network nationwide. It really is a fantastic program. And... Um, it's kind of interesting. I had a couple, um, um, I don't want to say their names. They were uh, president and vice president of a company in our office, and we we're talking about Christian scientists. They had no idea that Medicare would cover you if you went into a religious non-medical health care institution. They had no idea, and we pointed that out because they want to understand why we're talking with Christian scientists and promoting supplemental plans, and it's because of that, because that helps protect individuals and their loved ones, quite honestly. 
So when you have the Medicare supplement plan, original Medicare stays your primary insurance. So it's nationwide coverage and there's not a provider network. All you have to do is ask the facility if they take Medicare and if they do, you can be seen. They're also guaranteed renewable. So some people get concerned that they use the policy and they're worried that if they use the policy, the insurance company is going to raise their rates or go after right. them. And that's not the case. As long as you pay your premium, that policy will stay in force. That is a concern, right? Especially as we age, people worry about, well, what if I use it too much? Are they going to cancel it? And like Katie said, the answer is no. You pay your premium and they cannot cancel you. So with supplement plans, insurance companies said, okay, let's not make this confusing. And instead of using maybe colors or numbers, let's just go ahead and use A, B, C, D, because that won't be confusing for the fact that right. you have Medicare Part A and Part B that you get through the government. And then you have Plan A, Plan B, Plan C that you get as a right. supplement. But we're going to make it easy for you, right? <laughs> we're going to make it easy for you. This plan G, um, plan F was outstanding. Plan, we're going to talk about that in a second here, but plan G is the number one plan. I think John got you know inundated with questions about plan G. Plan G is the most popular Medicare supplement plan now. I have it. If I go into a Ranky for a part A stay, for example, I'm covered in full, whether it's three weeks or three months, it does not matter. On the part B side, if I have that outpatient or if I went into uh, the emergency room, my ambulance took me there, they reset a bone, and then I got out. Instead of being on the hook for 20%, I'm on, I have to pay the Part B deductible next year of $240. That's it. So my exposure is limited. And in California, just I'm just going to give you an example because people always ask, is what's the price? How much does it cost? Most plans are zip code rated, but Plan G in our area up here in Northern California runs about $130, $135 a month, depending on which zip code you're in. So very affordable, but what it does, it protects you, protects your loved ones about if I'm in for a part A stay or part, part B stay. Nancy, anything you have to add on this? Um, no, I know I'm putting you on the spot, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're doing a great job. And we do have um, patients that come to us with a card that says I've got supplemental. And when we look and see that they've got plan G, we go, oh, you're covered. That's great. You're, um, you're good. <laughs> But, but, but any of these, um, of course, they're all, um, depending on how much benefits you got in the plan, uh, it will affect the premium. Um, right. And also, I'm sure you're about to say this, but I, um, some people ask us, you know, well, what's the best company to get these from? And you guys can, can sh jump in on that. But the fact that this is standardized, they've got that up at the top there, standardized, mm -hmm. that is Medicare, the government specifying that these are the only types of plans that an insurance company can offer. So you have a standardized one and you can go to different companies that you might be interested in looking at and you can compare apples to apples. Um, so these are the only choices then that any insurance company can offer to you, um, but the prices will vary based on your age and um, your location. That's good, Nancy. You should come to our office. That was very good. You explained that better than we did. That was, that was perfect. That's exactly right. So if I'm in California or Arizona or Oregon or Iowa or Texas, there's a few states where they're different, about three states, but the other 47 all have the same exact plans. So you're right. Plan G is kind of the standard right now. Um, so as far as insurance companies, we use different insurance companies. We use some more than others because they're very competitive rate-wise. Um, in addition, we look for companies that have a track record of stable rates and claims payability that are fantastic. Because the last thing that we want you to do is to pay an insurance premium. And then when you have a claim, the insurance company gives you grief. That's right. Don't ever Don't. buy cheap. My mom said never buy cheap shoes and cheap mattresses. When I was little. And she was absolutely right. So I can tell you the plan that I have. And that we use with a lot of Christian scientists, and it depends, right? Sometimes in Florida it may be different than in North Carolina, but the majority of the time we're huge fans of the AARP United Healthcare plans. They don't pay us any more to promote them. They don't do anything to help us promote them, by the way. But we just know that they pay the claims. There's never any issues really. Um, AARP, that's the only company they endorse in the senior market. 
So again, it's not an advertisement. It's just that's who as a broker, we feel as brokers, we feel comfortable. We just don't have issues. Nancy, I don't know if you've experienced that at Arden Wood. Yes, I can say that AARP um, pays um, uh, smoothly and automatically. And um, for those who are, are thinking about um, care at a rinky, if you look at this chart, the first two lines you'll see over the last there, part A, coinsurance and deductible. And you see the check marks there. Those are um, what would be outside of, um, uh, which would be your responsibility if you didn't have this plan. And that's what Katie and Jim went over with you just recently. Um, and so if those two boxes are checked, that's you've got what you need for here at a rinky. Um, the other ones, as, as they've explained, are helpful um, to, uh, to cover you for Part B if there was ever uh, an immediate need that you needed to go to a hospital for, plus the fact that you have to have Part B in order right. to buy one of these supplemental plans. Exactly. So when we look at the supplement and we talk about what it covers, Nancy did a great job. <laughs> so when we're talking about just having Medicare Part A, we went over those daily costs and the deductible. If you have the supplement plan G, it takes care of all of that. And then you have an additional 365 days. Normally the care doesn't last that long, but it's that peace of mind of not having to worry about right. if I'm in Ardenwood or Rinky and I'm in here for 60 days and it's a Medicare approved stay. And now it's day 61 and Ardenwood says, it's now $400 a day. You don't have to stress and worry about that. So it's just that peace of mind. That's exactly right. So supplement plan G. So if you had Medicare part B and A, and you had no insurance, we know you have the deductible and then that 20%, but with supplement plan G, it takes care of that 20%. So after the 240, the supplement covers that. Part my exposure, if I have anything happen to me, is $240 pretty much. That's it. So to me, that's peace of mind. I mean, I look at that all the time. What about my spouse or my family? And I want to make sure I know what the limits are. And $240 is nothing. In the non-Christian science world, when I go see a physician or have lab work, you, you've hit that in the first visit. It's uh, That deductible is fulfilled. And you walk in the room and you hit it. <laughs> you, but it's for the entire year. So like part A is per per stay, part B is for the entire year. Yeah. So know that my exposure, $240, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. So part B is prescription drug coverage, helps with the cost of prescription drugs. It is optional. So you do not have to get part D, but if you don't purchase it when you sign up for Medicare A and B and you get it later, there is a penalty that will be applied. They're offered by private insurance companies, and there's two ways you get coverage. So if you have original Medicare with a supplement, you can decide to, uh, to get a Part D prescription drug plan, or you just go without the prescription drug plan. That's right. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan, then that is built into the coverage. So you can't get around that. You can't say take out the prescription drug coverage. It's just built into the policy. One thing we found with Christian scientists too, it's important that a lot of times, you know, um, I don't want to say unscrupulous people out there, but a lot of times you're sold something from whether you see a TV commercial or an aggressive agent selling you something that's going to say, this is going to take care of you, you don't have to worry. And it's <laughs> zero premium and it gives you dental and vision and you should get it. And I see a lot of Christian scientists that haven't had coverage and they sign up for it. And maybe they may be 70, 71, 72. And all of a sudden they, they call us and they go, I got this free plan zero, but I'm getting a penalty now from the government. What's happening? And the reason why is if you didn't sign up for Part D plan, right, when you first turned 65, the government says, listen, it's been seven years, right? Since you uh, five years is an easier example, F <laughs> five years, but we're going to fine you 34 cents a month. And you go, it's not a big deal, but they multiply that by 60 months. And you're going to go that extra 20 some dollars is each month and every month for the rest of your life. But on those Part D plans, when you do that, since it's included in there, if you didn't sign up when you're 65, you have to pay that penalty. So even though you think it's really good to have something is better than nothing and you haven't had that coverage for a while and you sign up, you're going to incur 
uh, penalty. So now is the time when we talk to a lot of Christian scientists about, yes, that's true. I got this penalty. They never told me that. Now's the time we can unravel that. We can take that plan away. You can go back to original Medicare. You can look at the supplement. Again, if God has blessed you with incredible health, you normally have to be healthy enough to get it. But you can go back to that original Medicare with the supplement and get rid of that Part D penalty, right? So that goes away because most Christian scientists are blessed with incredible health and don't need Part D prescription drug coverage. And Jim, just to clarify or restate what you just said, that Part D and everything you just said is only if you have a Medicare Advantage plan. That's correct. So everything up to this point, we've been talking about original Medicare, and now they're introducing the idea of a managed plan, and that's the only part where this penalty uh, might might hit you. Thank you. That's exactly (laughs) right. Exactly. So, yes, again, the Medicare Advantage plan, they're also called Part (laughs) C plans. So here's another instance where there's two names that mean the same thing. So you'll hear Part C or you'll hear Medicare Advantage they mean the exact same things. So Part C or Medicare Advantage plans are normally HMO or PPO type plans. So if you have a plan and you're not sure whether or not it's an HMO or a PPO or an Advantage plan, if you look in your wallet and you see something where it says like HMO, or if you see that little in the corner where it says that Medicare RX, that would tell you that it has the prescription drug coverage. And having that means that you have an advantage plan. Right. If you buy a plan that Joe Namath was promoting on TV, (laughs) that's an HMO type plan. They've got all the celebrities promoting these advantage plans. They're incredibly profitable to the insurance companies. But a lot of times, Nancy likes it. People don't know what they're getting, right? They think it's a good deal and they get it. Um, A lot of Christian scientists go, well, that seems like a a good deal. It's reasonable. It's zero premium. And now I have coverage. Problem is, we know it's not rinky friendly. It's not going to help you for a stay at Arden Wood. And can I just jump in there? Um, Please do. So again, Part A and Part B, original Medicare, is one choice and part c is your other choice that's being given to you folks the the part c is managed care um and you have to go to a specific network of um, facilities in order to get care and that's where we have problems is if you're in a particular network we're not going to be in those networks although medicare advantage plans are required by law to cover rinky care Um, It's just that those Medicare Advantage plans, um, frequently folks on the uh, other end of the phone have never heard of that. Right. Um, And the the key thing, though, as managed care, in order for you to be admitted at Arden Wood at a rinky, um, uh, if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to have pre-authorization. Uh, it's managed care, so you're supposed to go to the the care person who's in charge of your your care, um, and and supposed to get authorized to come. And so that's the first hurdle and one of the problems why it's not rinky friendly. Um, it doesn't mean you can't uh, we can't navigate it and get it handled, but four or five hours later, maybe we will have gotten um, through to the right person where we can try to to make that um, happen for you. And Nancy, I'll expand on that a little bit. Um, In our conversation with Christian scientists, we have talked with Christian scientists that have Medicare Advantage plans. Um, And one of the biggest pitfalls that I have seen is especially when someone has an HMO type Medicare Advantage plan, that they assign you a doctor. You're right. You have to, like you said, you have to go through that, that primary care physician to get any sort of referral. Well, as a Christian scientist, you don't see the doctor. So eventually what happens in a lot of cases is the doctor's office will drop you as a patient because you haven't come in and been been seen. And then if something happens and you need to go to a rinky or somewhere else to get any sort of service, you have the problem where the insurance company is telling you, you have to go through a primary care physician, but now you don't have one assigned to you because you've been dropped. So I have seen that where that has become a roadblock to people getting any sort of care because they've been dropped by that doctor. That's exactly right. And now is the time that you can do something about that. 
So we highly encourage you, if you have those type plans, to take a look at it. It doesn't mean you have to change, but you want to look at that and see what your options are. Um, often people go, no one ever told me about that, and I want to get something that's easy to use, for example, for a stay at Arden Wood, which would be original Medicare. And the secondary coverage, the supplemental plan, would help take care of most of all your co-pays for a stay at Arden Wood. Our goal is really to help show you the differences in the plans so you understand the pros and the cons, so that you understand what you have and how it functions, because at the end of the day, that is the most important thing. What you don't want is for something to happen, and then you have to then change your plans or figure out something else because you just weren't aware of how it worked. Right. So and what... With Medi- Katie, with a Medicare Advantage plan... Uh, where can you go for care compared to an original? So with a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to stay within their network of doctors and providers. And so because of the way their plan is worded like that, Nancy, that's where you're right, that you guys have the issue where if someone wants to be seen in a rinky, they say, you're not within our network of doctors and providers. So you're limited to to see who is on their list. And it becomes really, really restrictive. And so I know when talking with Christian scientists, you know, they're worried about Medicare getting too much information. But when you have an advantage plan, they want so much information for you to be seen, for you to get care. They want a diagnosis. They want all kinds of stuff that is is very, very invasive. And remember, with Medicare Advantage, it's not your physician making the call. It's the insurance company. Like Nancy said, prior authorization, pre-certification is normally required right, for certain types of care, especially with for non-Christian scientists. We see that all the time where people assume they can have a knee replaced or a hip replaced, surgeries like that. And with an HMO, that's not how it works. Your physician doesn't have the call. Your orthopedic surgeon may not have the call. It's totally up to the insurance company to decide, right, if that's going to be allowed because it costs more money. It really comes down to dollars and cents with HMO type plans. So lastly, we're going to talk about what about long-term care? So long-term care helps when is when you need help with activities of daily living. So you need more help with healing or practical day-to-day care. Um, long-term care policies, the ones that we look at, can be used for a Christian science practitioner. Um, or if you don't have one nearby and you need someone else, maybe a family member or a loved one to help care for you. Um, There are a few Christian science friendly plans where you can use that benefit how you want. So it's called an indemnity or cash benefit that they pay to you. Um, And it just helps keep your family. um, They're happy because they know that you have that that money to pay for care if you need it. Right, because adult children are always worried about. So we're not going to go into this much today. We just want to make sure that you understand long term care is not covered by Medicare. Skilled care is, right? Nancy went into that a little bit. I'm sure we'll get some questions on that too. But there's new, pardon, Nancy? Could I just say one thing on your slide before there? Um, um, The the word Christian science practitioner um, means something different from Christian science nurse to us. And I I think perhaps you were referring to a nurse there, a practitioner is one you would call. I think so, yes. 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 Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> we're always learning right. always, always learning, learning. Yeah, always. Okay. That's okay. five years and we're still learning so, so thank you with long-term care planning if you haven't done any sort of planning or you don't have any sort of policy you're going to self-fund by by just default right so you're going to have to decide what assets that you set aside for care somebody's going to write a check and it's normally going to be your adult son or daughter writing a check for you know on your behalf out of your account the next option like katie showed up here it's not a great option, uh, Medi-Cal, Medicaid in most other states. But again, there's really not very many options you're going to do where they go, where they tell you to go. And you really have to spin down assets. And that's really not something that most people ever want to consider. It's kind of a safety net, right, for people that uh, don't have many assets. The third option would be long-term care insurance. And people typically think of the old long-term care policies where you pay on them like your car insurance or your homeowner's insurance. Hope you don't use them. But if you don't use them, then you don't get any premiums back. And in California, we have this monster called CalPERS out there. And they've sold more long-term care policies than anybody out there. And they've had 12 to 13 different rate increases. So there's, there's new ways to do it, right? Nobody wants to buy another 
auto policy or a homeowner's policy where you pan it forever and you have all these massive increases. So we're just briefly talking about it today. Um, we use life insurance, believe it or not. The reason we use life insurance for long-term care is you're going to receive some type of benefit. You're going to pay a premium to the insurance company. And for that, you're going to get either uh, a death benefit that's tax-free, right? The government says it's tax-free. So if you put in, for example, $100,000 over one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever the duration, however you pay for it, you're going to get some type of a benefit back. If I want to cash in, in some states, you can get most or all of your money back after five or 10 or 15 years. You pass away, you get a tax-free death benefit. But going back to the long-term care, they give you a multiple of the monies you put in for care. So for example, $100,000 maybe in 15, 20 years will equal four or $500,000 for long-term care. So that's going to help offset the cost if you do have a long-term care stay. And the plans we try and use are Christian science friendly, meaning they pay a cash benefit. So if I receive that benefit, I'm free to take a trip, pay my neighbor to come and mow my lawn, have my daughter fly out here. I can have a stay at Ardenwood and I can use those monies for whatever I want. So we really like these indemnity type plans. And we're going to talk about that later in the year too. We just want to make you aware of it though. It's a great way to protect all of your assets by putting a little bit of money into a policy and you know you're going to receive a benefit back. The most important thing that you need to know about today is that you can call or email Jim or myself for any help that you need. Um, we don't charge you to work with us. So the insurance companies pay us. So if you buy an insurance policy, you do your application through us and they pay us to help you. And then you have us. So instead of having to call an insurance company, do the shopping on your own, make fight any fights that you need to fight, <laughs> we're here to That's help. It's our job, you. right? We do the tough part. Okay. <laughs> Um, that is our website is what's medicare.com and then our contact information I know will appear at the end as well. So John, what do you think? Do we have time for a few uh, questions or are we coming back Thursday? Hey Jim, we've got a few questions. Why don't we go for like 10 more minutes? What do you sure. say? Yeah. 510, just before 5 p.m. now it's 556. So we've just got a few questions here. Great job. I, I, you know, we've done this several times and I learned something every time. So you guys do so a great job. With Nancy on the phone. And Nancy <laughs> She's spot awesome. on. So <laughs> hope everyone's enjoying this. Um, so first question is the 61 to 90 days cumulative for Medicare? So it's a per day charge, right? Is that the referring to? I think, I think so. That's it was yeah, a, it's a yeah. per day. So day six, if you're in day 61, 62, you're paying that additional 408, right? For those two days. For those days. Each day, exactly. each day correct. Yeah. Each day, correct. For each, for, for each episode that you might need to use that That's benefit right. period. But it's a daily rate. Yeah, yes. it is. Yes, John. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Next up, if my stay is 60 days and the benefit period ends after I haven't received care for those 60 days, am I paying for the 60 days that I'm not receiving care? which are part of the benefit period? No, no, what? Oh, what? Let's, oh Nancy, go, ahead, Nancy. go for it, Nancy. <laughs> Let me try, and then you can, okay. you can clarify. Mm -hmm. um, that particular reference to 60 days has to do mm -hmm. with the end of one time when you went home healed and happy, mm -hmm. um, um, but maybe something different happens um, and you need care again for something different. If, if that second need happens before 60 days has elapsed, then um, the prior benefit period continues. But if more than 60 days have elapsed, then right. you start the clock again. You're at a new deductible, a new 90-day period. Perfect. Yeah, that's Perfect. great. That's a great answer. Perfect. You stated. Thank you. I have part A only. I need hearing aids. Are there hearing aid insurance policies in the United States? Um, actually, um, there are. There, there are a lot of the Medicare Advantage plans we talked about that aren't like normally the best for Christian scientists. A lot of times they'll offer a hearing, you know, hearing aids, hearing plan inside those policies. Um, but nowadays, you can simply, whoever asks that, you can go to your search engine, Google or whoever you use, 
and just put in hearing aids. There's some great new hearing aids and new technology out there, and they're so much less costly. And, you know, 15 years ago, you'd be paying five to $8,000 per per hearing aid, right? Times two. Now we see some great ones out there for $750 that are really fantastic. You can use your iPhone, right? To, to help tune your, uh, your hearing aids. So you don't have to go buy a supplemental plan necessarily, but you should just check out there, be a good consumer and look at different websites. There's a ton of them. I think there's some really good ones in San Francisco too, John. There are some um, dental options that are now including hearing as a benefit on top of oh, that. That's right. Uh, but right. that's really dependent on where you live. So if you want more information, you'd have to reach out to us. That's right. Some states have it, some states don't. Right. That's that's exactly right. United Healthcare um, knew that was an issue, and they came out with a bundled dental, vision, and hearing plan because most people want to look. If you buy each one separately, right, you're going to cost more. If you buy it as a bundle, it's much less. So that's another option. But you would have to have, I'm thinking, right, the A and B. She only said, was it, she said part A only, Part John? A only, right. Mm -hmm. The dental and vision. Yeah, she you, you would be fine, that. right, That because that's not technically Medicare. We're thinking out loud here. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Next up, will a supplemental insurance plan G still pay if you have exhausted your Medicare Part A and or B benefits? Good question. Yes. You want to answer that, Nancy? Because you do run into that much at all? Um, in my 15 years here, um, I believe there were two or three individuals I can think of who were very grateful that they had that extra 365 days in their policy, not that they needed okay. all of those. But right. um, yes, it after the 150th day of care and Medicare benefits exhausted, because they had the supplemental policy, um, they did not, um, that the policy paid for those extra days of care. Right. It's just more peace of mind, right? You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I think that is a huge peace of mind thing for families, especially. Right. It's like mom and dad or auntie, you know, uncle, what do you have? How, how are you right. How are you set up? Yeah. Um, and, and I do, should say that, um, of course, the, the care need has to still qualify. Right, yeah. exactly. One thing we didn't talk about, and maybe you could talk about it a little bit, Nancy, is the advanced healthcare directive. How important that is in getting your affairs in order, your personal affairs in order, or those of a loved one. Sure, it is definitely part of the whole package, if you will, of uh, one you might wanna consider. Um, what it is, is a, a legal agreement that allows you to appoint an individual that you trust, um, to make healthcare decisions for you, should you be unable to do so yourself. Um, and it also allows you to make choices ahead of time so that your family um, or your loved ones um, would know ahead of time what it is that you wanted. Um, so nobody is wondering um, what, what, what type of care you want. Um, it's already just designated in your form. Um, and the form is fluid, you can uh, make it uh, customized just to what your needs and your desires are. But having that in place, uh, we have seen numerous times the benefit of that. Mm. Um, if you're out and about and something happens, and as uh, Katie was saying, some loving person uh, calls 911 and you end up in a hospital, um, if you're wanting to go to a rinky and have uh, Christian science care, this healthcare directive um, gives the authority of a loved one to be able to go to the hospital and say, I have the right to make this care decision and this is what her wishes are or his wishes are, and they, they will do that. Otherwise, uh, you, you may not be able to speak for yourself. And uh, right. so that's one of the benefits to it. And it's important that the person that has the that medical power of attorney understands that they have it. Right. Um, because if they don't know they have it and you're in the hospital, they're not going to know to be able to come and use it. Um, and I have, I think, Nancy, you were the one that suggested at some point that having that like on a copy of that on your refrigerator. So if something happens and like medical personnel show up at your house, they check the fridge right. and they will see that. Yeah. yeah. So they and can also, find it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly, exactly. And and having an electronic version of it uh, with uh, giving yeah. your, your healthcare power of attorney an electronic version of that yes. 
is is we've seen that to be really helpful too. Right. For instance, as Nancy pointed out, if if you don't have an advanced healthcare directive and you are in the hospital, pretty tough getting out of the hospital because mm -hmm. everyone's trying to do the right thing. No one wants to get sued or and they and they they are focused on that individual's care, but mm -hmm. it makes infinite amount of sense to have an advanced healthcare director or ACHD. You can find an advanced healthcare directive form on our website at ardenwood.org. So check it out. And it's designed for Christian scientists, but everyone should have one of those. It's imperative. Okay. Here's the first of many, Jim and Katie. Please define plan G. G. <laughs> yes. So plan G is a policy that you buy through an insurance company. And that is merely to act as help to pay those claims. Right. So the reason that we recommend plan G a lot is because it is the most benefit rich plan that most people can get. And the thing that we find is when people are retired, they don't want to hassle. Right. You don't want to have to worry about coming up with a whole bunch more money or the loopholes in an insurance right. policy. They It just offers the most comprehensive coverage. Exactly. So we find yeah. people just like that peace of mind of not having to stress about what it's going to cover, what it's not going to cover. It makes your life easy. You know, we get asked all the time, what about K and L and M? I go, I, I, I've i never used one of those in 34 years because you have to worry about, geez, does this doctor take medic? Does he take assignment? Does he take Medicare? I have a copay. It's kind of like, why are you paying the premium for all these hassles? For a few dollars more, Plan G just fits so well. There, there is a um, John Plan F out there, like Plan F, like Frank. And if you're born in 1954 or earlier, you still qualify for that plan. The only difference is Plan F has no deductibles. So you never have to worry about the $240 deductible or what it's going to be in 2025 or 2026. So Plan F is still out there and it's a great plan. We see some people that still want to purchase it. And again, you can if you're born in 1954 or earlier. Great. That's so helpful. Can you please define what a PPO is? I should have done a better job of that. Sure. So a PPO is a preferred provider organization. That is a term that insurance companies use where they're talking about they have that network of providers that that prefer to take the insurance that will take the insurance so they're in network for that plan so ppo is just kind of a shorthand that we use for that it's larger than an hmo network hmo networks are typically smaller ppos are normally uh, we see most of them nationwide some in california have local hmos or ppos too so but a ppo is usually gives you more flexibility than an hmo hmos are no flexibility mm -hmm. great what if I have Medicare Part A and Part B, but no Advantage plan? May I pay a penalty regarding Part D when I get a supplement plan? It, yeah, if you didn't originally sign up for Part D when you were first Medicare eligible, you will pay some type of penalty. Again, the penalty is minor on the Part D plans. But as a Christian scientist, you really want to look and say, do I really have a need for that prescription? And is that something we're going to need in the future? Um, and John, before, you know, this it took a lot of time of Nancy and everybody being patient for us. We thought, yeah, you should absolutely get one. Now I understand you you may not. That's a personal decision. That That's up to each individual to pray and think about, do you really need that plan or not? That's that's our view on it now. And that's one of the benefits when you're doing the supplement and the prescription drug plan because they're separate. So you can do the supplement and not have to have the prescription right. drug plan. But when we're talking about the Medicare Advantage, those Part C plans, it's built in. So you can't take that out of it. So with a supplement, you don't have to have the prescription That's right. drug plan. Stand, you go. Both stand alone. You can buy each or either individually. And John, didn't the questioner say they have Part A and B? Yes, exactly. Okay, so mm -hmm. that individual has original Medicare right now. Right. And so they've made the choice for that. They're not having, they don't have an advantage plan, which is the other choice. And exactly. And if they, they're if they looking, want to get a supplement. If they're looking yeah. at doing a supplement plan and it's been more than six months since they've had A and B, to get a supplement plan, you do have to answer health questions. Um, and that varies a little bit by state as far as the health questions that are required. But if it's something where you're thinking about it or you're wanting information, um, you can reach out to us. And what we do is 
we would talk to you about the rates. We would talk to you about the health questions and ask you those and go over all of that before we put in an application. The last thing that we would do is put in an application and then you say, oh, yeah, the answer is yes to one of those health questions and you don't get the policy. So we would go over all that ahead of time. And here's reality out there. We talked to so many Christian mm -hmm. scientists are incredibly blessed with great health. These questions, it's amazing. Most all of them are no, all, mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, Non-Christian scientists are almost always yes, and they, they cannot get the plan. So you always want to get it something when you can. Again, God has blessed you with incredible health, and most of those questions are going to be no. So now is the time, because we're going to talk to a lot of people in the next couple months here. Now is the time to get off those Advantage plans. Go back. You've got A and B, Nancy. Now you can get a supplement plan. You do not need to get that Part D plan, right? That's totally up to the individual. Why don't we just, there's three more questions. Why don't we just finish these and sure. we'll have more questions than on Thursday. There's a lot more coming. Okay, we'll we'll put those off until Thursday, but I'll finish with these three. <laughs> I have plan A and B and I'm 75. Can I get Medigap and will there be a penalty? Uh, the answer is yes, you can get a Medigap and there will be no penalty. The penalty only applies to the part B side. So you have A and B, there is no penalty. You just have to look at the cost and see what that cost is going to be. If it fits in your budget, if you can answer the health questions, no, then you're good to go. Great. If you change from one supplement plan to a different supplement plan, is there a penalty? No, there's not. No, you can change. In California, they have something called a 30-day birthday rule, where you can change every year within 30 days of your birthday. So you can go from plan G from company ABC to plan G, to company XYZ. Like Nancy said, the benefits are identical. The premiums are the only difference, but there is no penalty to change. Great. And I think this last one is just a duplicate. I'm just reading it. If you already have Medicare A and B for a couple of years, is there a late enrollment penalty for adding a Medicare supplement later, as in part G? So I think you already answered that. Yeah, no, there are no, no penalties. So penalty only applies to the government side. That's the part B side. That's where they look to penalize. Exactly. Supplemental plans, no, no penalties. Mm -mm. And and Jim, you can get a supplemental plan 12 months a year. Is that correct? Yeah. Absolutely, Nancy. You can apply anytime we, we do them. You're around for Christian scientists, right? It's just, it's whenever you think, okay, it's time, right? I, I Maybe I've gone, maybe I'm 70, maybe I'm 68, maybe I'm 75. When you think it's time, you have to look, look at the plan, look at the cost, and then we always tell people, you you have to think about it, pray about it, make sure that's right for you, and then you apply. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Katie, Jim, and Nancy. That thank was you. so clear and helpful. This That's why we have these webinars, because this is complicated stuff. So as was stated earlier, please don't hesitate to call any of these three with Medicare or insurance-related questions at any time. They're all happy to help. One other resource you are welcome to contact is the Christian Science Provider Network, which works directly with Medicare on behalf of Christian Science care facilities like Ardwood, as well as individual Christian scientists. Their website is csprovidernetwork.org, and it'll be listed at the end of this. Another resource for financial assistance available to all Christian scientists and all ages is the National Fund for Christian Science Nursing, or NFCSN. Contact information for these resources is listed at the end of today's webinar. Again, the point is that it's wise to be thinking through your options now. And before we go, I want to invite you to attend our annual Christmas celebration coming up on Sunday, December 3rd. Yes, we're thinking about Christmas. Sunday, December 3rd at 2 p.m. Pacific time. You'll receive an email invitation in early November, and you can register for all of our events on our website at ardenwood.org. Thank you again for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again this Thursday afternoon for our Q&A session. Same time, same Zoom link. Um, if you receive a reminder of an email with a link in it, you'll receive one of those. There'll be one more Q&A session on Thursday, November 9th. So that's also a possibility. You'll receive reminder emails for all of these webinars. So thank you again and goodbye Thanks for everybody. now. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Nancy, John. Thank you. Thank you.